We will now have an event. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her own tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and all of its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally, and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Thank you very much for attending here this morning, and I suppose we could be grateful for the fact that the gods have looked down on us weather-wise. This is... Uh, the last of our annual visitations to this hallowed place for the uh, run-up to 2016. It's an honour now to introduce uh, the world-renowned artist Robert Balla. Um, he's a long-time activist on national and social issues. He's the chair of the Reclaim Division um, Association and he was also very instrumental in the 19th anniversary of the, the Rising. Robert is both kind and generous with his time and his talents, and he's a man who always says yes and always lends a hand. So I'll pass you over to Robert now, please. Thank you. It's a huge honour for me to be asked to speak to you today in this historic place. I would like to thank the 1916-21 Club for the invitation to speak here today. This time, this year, is the 99th anniversary of the Easter Rising, and I think all our minds are focused on 2016, which will mark the centenary of the Easter Rising. And I think a lot of us, over a period of time, have been concerned and worried by the lack of interest by official Ireland in this centenary and I think it was due to the concern and the lobbying of many groups and organizations like the 1916-21 club that eventually forced the government to announce a program last year. Unfortunately that program proved to be extraordinarily disappointing and the reaction I think by the people of Ireland to that program seemed to galvanize the government into uh, re-announcing another program uh, just a short time ago in the barracks across the road, the National Museum of Ireland, Collins Barracks. And uh, this new program, I think, uh, is, is much, much better and uh, deals with some of the issues that I think are of concern uh, to the broad mass of the Irish people. However, I would argue that there are still some questions to be asked about the government's program. I mean, after all, what are, will we be doing in 2016? We will be marking the centenary of the vision of the men and women of 1916. These people took on the tyranny of empire to realize the dream of an independent, sovereign, democratic republic. And many of them, 
lost their lives in this struggle. And yet, the Irish government seems to think it's appropriate that during the commemorations next year, a day will be set aside to commemorate those British soldiers who died during the Rising. Now, it's worth remembering that some of those British soldiers belong to the regiment of the Sherwood Foresters, who actually formed the firing parties that executed these brave men who lie in this plot here. I find this quite extraordinary and certainly inappropriate. I can't imagine that the United Kingdom would set aside around the time of uh, the uh, memorials at the Cenotaph a day to commemorate the German soldiers who died in the First World War and the Second World War. Uh, confident nations and confident peoples don't do things like that. So I think... Uh, So I'm absolutely convinced that it will be necessary uh, that the people of Ireland will ensure that the centenary of the Rising is celebrated and commemorated in an appropriate and relevant manner. The men and women of 1916 were not merely rebels. These people we're not going to be satisfied simply with a government in Dublin, with the Irish flag flying over public buildings or a harp on the coinage. These people desired something much more fundamental than that. They desired a complete transformation of Irish society, both public and private. They were visionaries, they were revolutionaries, and I think that's really important to bear in mind when we consider next year and how we're going to celebrate this seminal event in Irish history. I happen to have my studio just down the road here and apart from important occasions like this uh, I do uh, stroll in here sometimes to meditate and to relax and one of the thoughts that always comes to my mind is what if the brave men who lie in this quicklime plot were to rise up and look around themselves, look around. What would they think? What would they think of the so-called republic that we live in today? And, and does that republic measure up to the dreams and aspirations that are contained in that extraordinary document, the proclamation of the Irish Republic of 1916, which was so eloquently read to you by Jim Connolly Heron? and is magnificently carved on the wall here behind me by the Irish sculptor Michael Biggs. The, uh, the proclamation guarantees the right of the ownership of Ireland to the people of Ireland. Well, I wonder how does the sale of the Corrib gas for a pittance to an international corporation fit with the dreams contained in this proclamation? Is that, was that done in the interests of the Irish people? I think not. And the civil and religious liberties and equal opportunities guaranteed to all the Irish citizens, how does that, the Ireland of today fit in with those dreams and aspirations? I just wonder People today who find they have to go on strike for decent working conditions and for the imposition of zero hours employment. Are they living the dream of Pierce and Connolly and the brave men who are buried here today? Who are buried in this plot? And finally, uh, the wonderful aspiration of children, cherishing all the children of the nation equally. I wonder if the statistic recently produced by Bernardo's, the children's charity, that the fact that one 
in six children living in Ireland today are living below the official poverty level. How does that sit with the dreams and vision of the men and women of 1916? These are the issues I think that should concern us and should inform the nature of the celebration and commemoration that will be organized next year in Ireland. I think we must not, we must of course commemorate the bravery and the sacrifice of those brave people, that heroic generation. But also, I think we must bear in our mind the vision of those people, the kind of republic that they wanted, a republic that is so clearly defined in the proclamation. So that is our task, to reclaim the vision of the men and women of 1916. On behalf of the relatives, we are going to have Helen Lytton, who is the grandniece of Thomas Clark and Ned Daly, and they are going to lay a wreath with Brahana Obrada from Fondok on Pearsha. The honour of laying a wreath on behalf of the club goes to Charlie Murphy. Charlie is a lifelong Republican. He's a former committee member and a member of the 1916-21 club. Ah. Uh.